Hi, welcome to this video. I welcome you all to my channel all about mechanical engineering. For today's video, the topic of discussion is introduction to thermodynamics. Now we all know what is thermodynamics, but have you ever wondered from where we got this term thermodynamics? The answer is from Greek. There are two different words in Greek. First is called as therm and second is called as dynamic. Therm means heat, dynamic means power. So basically thermodynamics is related to heat and power and their conversion. And then we get the term thermodynamics. Now the modern definition of thermodynamics is given as it is defined as a branch of science which deals with energies possessed by gases and vapors, their conversion in terms of heat and work and their relationship with the properties of the system. Thermodynamics emerged as a science after the construction of first successful atmospheric steam engine which was given by Thomas Savery in 1697. This work was later on carried by Thomas Newcomen and another engine was given in 1712. But there was a problem with these engines. They were very slow and inefficient. But these people at least given a way for the people to work in that direction and improve the efficiency. First and second laws of thermodynamics emerged simultaneously in 1850s out of the work carried by William Rankine, Rudolf Clausius, and Lord Kelvin. Whereas zeroth law of thermodynamics was given after framing of first and second law in the year 1931 by R. H. Fowler. Even though zeroth law was given after framing of first and second law, it was named zeroth law not as third law of thermodynamics because it serves as a physical basis for first and second law. Zeroth law deals with concept of temperature, first law deals with law of conservation of energy and second law deals with entropy. Thermodynamics was first officially used in a publication by Lord Kelvin in 1849 whereas the first textbook was written on thermodynamics by William Rankine in 1859. Now, there are different approaches to study thermodynamics. Basically, there are two approaches. First is called as macroscopic approach or classical approach. Second is called as microscopic approach or statistical approach. Now, what is the difference between these two approaches? Let us take an example. Consider you have a hot cup of coffee which is maintained at 70 degrees Celsius and the environment is having a lower temperature that is say 20 degrees Celsius. Now obviously we all know heat flows from a high temperature region to a low temperature region. Now if I ask you that what is the temperature of the coffee after say 10 minutes. Now you will take a thermometer, you will dip it inside the coffee, you will take the temperature reading and you can say this is the amount of temperature. Now what you have done is called as macroscopic approach or classical approach because you are considering the system, the substance inside it as a bulk. You are not taking care of molecular level activity and you are not studying individual molecule at a time. But if you want to study the same system in a microscopic approach or statistical approach, then we have to calculate the amount of temperature available with each and every molecule available in the system. Then we have to sum it as a total value and we get almost the same value which was calculated in the case number one. So these are two approaches. In this classical or macroscopic approach is easy involves minimum amount of calculations whereas microscopic approach is a bit tedious and involves a lot of calculations. If you want to understand any system and you are talking about properties as a bulk as a mass then you go for macroscopic approach. If you are interested in finding out what is happening at molecular level then microscopic approach is used. Now application areas of thermodynamics. The question is, is there any field or area where there is no thermodynamic interaction available? For finding the answer, let us check out those processes which we come across every day. The first process. 
cooking your food in a pressure cooker in this my pressure cooker and the substance contain which is present in that is my system when i'm heating it for cooking process then i'm supplying heat to my system means there is an interaction which is heat interaction and something is transferred from my surrounding to system obviously thermodynamics is involved in this type of system second example heating water with the help of immersible water heater now in this case what we are doing we are providing an electrical supply to a immersible water heater which is obtaining electrical current and generating heat which is then transferred to the water in order to heat it means here also we are having conversion of one form of energy into another so there should be thermodynamics involved in this process also the third one adjusting our clothing according to the atmospheric conditions to maintain a particular temperature now we all know as the atmospheric temperature changes we adjust our clothing why we do this in order to maintain a constant temperature of our body at which we feel comfortable means there also the amount of temperature available matters and that is to be maintained constant and that's why we adjust our clothing a hot cup of coffee gets cooled naturally now this is happening because your hot cup has more temperature than the surrounding so it loses heat to the surrounding in order to obtain an equilibrium condition means your hot cup of coffee gets cooled and has the same temperature as of the surrounding environment so there also you have transfer of energy from one region to another that is also involving thermodynamics household refrigerator now the function of a refrigerator is to cool the substances which are kept inside in order to do so you have to remove heat from that substances and reject it to the surroundings so that is the basic function of a refrigerator so we are extracting heat means you are having some amount of energy removed from that system so that is how we are having thermodynamics involved in a household refrigerator as well a conditioning system works on the same principle as of refrigerator but the system the setup is somewhat different and the area of that system is different and many more there are many examples which we come across daily but we never observe them from thermodynamic point of view what it means thermodynamic processes are available everywhere we even use plenty of thermodynamic processes in our day to day life knowingly or unknowingly unknowingly yes now the question is how when our palms become cold in winter season we rub our palms against one another now what exactly we are trying to do we are trying to convert rubbing frictional energy into heat energy to increase the temperature of that palms that indicates we come across number of thermodynamic processes daily the only difference is we never observe that particular processes from thermodynamic point of view this was all about introduction to thermodynamics in the coming sessions we will discuss one by one every topic related to thermodynamics in detail hope you enjoyed the session thank you for watching